Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Growing up in Hawaii, I learned the value of caring for our home and caring for our planet and the basic principle that we are all connected in this great chain of cause and effect. The Dakota Access Pipeline is a threat to this great balance of life. Despite strong opposition from the Standing Rock Sioux and serious concerns raised by the EPA, the Department of Interior, the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, and other federal agencies, the Army Corps of Engineers approved permits to construct the Dakota Access Pipeline without adequately consulting the tribes and without fully evaluating the potential impacts to the neighboring tribal lands, sacred sites, and their water supply. Just one spill near the tribe's reservation could release thousands of barrels of crude oil contaminating the tribe's drinking water. The impact of the Dakota Access Pipeline is clear. Energy Transfer Partners, the company that's constructing the Dakota Pipeline, has a history of serious pipeline explosions which have caused injury, death, and significant property damage in the past decade. The future operator of the planned pipeline, Sunoco Logistics, has had over 200 environmentally damaging oil spills in the last six years alone, more than any of its competitors. Protecting our water is not a partisan political issue. It is an issue that is important to all people and all living beings everywhere. Water is life. We cannot survive without it. Once we allow an aquifer to be polluted, there is very little that can be done about it. This is why it is essential that we prevent our water resources from, be from being polluted in the first place. Our founding fathers took great inspiration from Native American forms of governance and the democratic principles that they were founded on. Their unique form of governance was built on an agreement called the Great Law of Peace, which states that before beginning their deliberations, the council shall be obliged, and I quote, to express their gratitude to their cousins and greet them, and they shall make an address and offer thanks to the earth where men dwell, to the streams of water, the pools, the springs, and the lakes, to the maize and the fruits, to the medicinal herbs and trees, to the forest trees for their usefulness, and to the great creator who dwells in the heavens above, who gives all the things useful to men, and who is the source and the ruler of health and life." End of quote. This recognition of our debt to the creator and our responsibility to be responsible members of this great web of life was there from the beginning of Western democracy. Freedom is not a buzzword. The freedom of our founding fathers was not the freedom to bulldoze wherever you like. Our freedom is a freedom of mind, a freedom of heart, a freedom to worship as we see fit, freedom from tyranny and freedom from terror. That's the freedom this country was founded on, the freedom cultivated by America's native people and the freedom that the Standing Rock Sioux are now exercising. This weekend, I'm joining thousands of veterans from all across the country at Standing Rock to stand in solidarity with our Native American brothers and sisters. Together, we call on President Obama to immediately construction of this pipeline, respect the sacred lands of the Standing Rock Sioux, and respect their right to clean water. The truth is, whether it's the threat to essential water sources in this region, the lead-contaminated water in Flint, Michigan, or the threat posed to a major Hawaii aquifer by the Red Hill fuel leak, each example underscores the vital importance of protecting our water resources. We cannot undo history, but we must learn lessons from the past and carry them forward to encourage cooperation among free people, to protect the sacred, to care for the earth and for our children and our children's children. What's at stake is our shared heritage of freedom and democracy and our shared future on this great turtle island, our United States of America.